All right, so let's continue looking at uh, redox chemistry. Okay, now what we're gonna do, very important skill this, this is where you see how knowing how to work out an oxidation state comes in handy, okay? We're gonna balance a redox equation or balance a redox process, okay? So here's the classic, okay? MnO4 minus plus, this is oxalate iron, turns into Mn2 plus plus carbon dioxide, okay? Now, <clears throat> Question, and we've balanced equations before many, many times, okay? Why can't we just balance this normally? Oh, you know, make sure the number of MNs is the same, and Cs is the same, and Os is the same. Well, that works most of the time, uh, because most reactions are not redox, okay? But hey, we can't balance this just normally, because remember what we said earlier? You gotta keep track of those electrons. We need number of electrons transferred because redox is an electron transfer process, must be consistent. I.e. what's lost in the oxidation step must be gained in the reduction step, okay? We have to transfer a consistent number of electrons. So just like with that sodium chloride example, nice and easy, one was lost, one was gained, and we saw that through adding the two half equations, okay? We gotta do the same kind of thing, but with this kind of more complex situation. Okay, so there's a process, right? So there's a process. First thing we're gonna do, we have to kind of see which species was oxidized, which one was reduced, and then write our two half equations, okay? So this is where writing those oxidation states comes in handy. Now, if we look, in each of these situations, oxygen is bound to something where it wins. So the oxygen oxidation state will always be minus two, okay? We're only looking for change, all right? So we're gonna work out the oxidation state of atoms other than oxygen, and then we'll look at changes left to right and see, hey, who went up, who went down, where oxidation and reduction occurred. So carbon and CO2, nice and easy, hopefully, two times two is four, so that's a plus four, right? So plus four. You can do the little kind of math, you know, little table thing if you wish. Atomic iron, plus two. Hmm, these two you probably wanna do it kind of on the side, if you did that, you'd find that was a plus three, and this was a plus seven, a bit like chromate we saw before. Okay, so it's a tie for the highest number. All right, now, hmm, oxidation and reduction, okay? Oxidation and reduction, now think about this. Oxidation is loss, right, of electrons. If I lose electrons, I become more positive, okay? More positive. All right? So oxidation, I become more positive. So if I look here, manganese went from a plus seven to a plus two, it actually became less positive, right? So if you think about it, hey, a plus three to a plus four, I've lost electrons, okay? So this guy here, is the oxidation step. Okay, now, why is it called oxidation? Because back in the day, adding oxygen was the thing, okay? So, you know, oftentimes we see more oxygens in the products. Not quite the same here. It's kind of an actual, if you kind of average it out, it's the same number, but the minus two charges kind of help in there, okay? But if we look at reduction, must be the other one, Rig, reduction is gain of electrons. So if I, came, if I gain electrons, I get more negative charge, right? So if I go from a plus seven to a plus two, I've become more negative. I've actually, if you think about it, gained five electrons. All right, or five negative charges, so that's reduction, okay? Reduction is like I'm reducing the amount of oxygen, okay? So back in the day, Oxidation, you'd see more oxygen in the products. Reduction, you'd see less oxygen in the products. And that's definitely what we see here. Okay. So, what we're gonna do, step one, having oxidized, sorry, having identified where oxidation and reduction occur, manganese was reduced, carbon was oxidized, okay. What we're gonna do is split this thing into two half equations. So the manganese reduction half equation and the carbon oxidation half equation, okay? So split the overall equation into a pair of half equations and balance everything 
other than hydrogen and oxygen. So in other words, where the action happens. So we're just going to make sure we've got the right number of manganese and the right number of carbon. We're going to add, and this is done under what we call acidic conditions, so we'll add H in the form of H plus later and we'll add oxygen in the form of water. Okay, so there's my MnO4, okay, there's my Mn. I'm only worried about the manganese, just the thing that goes up or down, okay? So I've got one manganese, one manganese, fair enough, right? I'm just making sure I've got the one atom both sides of manganese. I'm just balancing the thing that goes up or down. Here, I've got to be careful, right? Because if I have one oxalate, one molecule contains two carbons, I need two carbon dioxides because there's one carbon per molecule, not two. All right, so first step, this, if you wish, is our very basic half equation setup. We have the reduction half equation, manganese and carbon. Make sure we've got the right number of oxidized and reduced species, manganese and carbon. All right, now, first step, obviously there's oxygen in there. We've got to balance up that oxygen by adding water. This happens always in aqueous solution. So I'm going to split it up. Now, my advice is if you want to do this all at once, a nice thing to do is actually kind of spread them out, okay? And then you can just keep adding stuff to just one equation. I'm going to do it kind of in multiple steps, but you're welcome to do it in one step with multiple parts, right? So MnO4 minus aqueous, and leave a big old gap, right? If you're doing this all at once. There we go. That's the first one. That's our um, reduction step, right? And then C2O4 2 minus turns into 2. Remember we said we have to get 2 CO2. All right. Now, step two then, having got our very basic half equation, step one, we're going to add oxygen in the form of water, okay? So I've got to make sure I've got four oxygens both sides, like balancing an equation. Hey, four oxygens, and I'm bringing it in the form of water, H2O, I need four H2O. Fantastic. Here, four oxygens, four oxygens, I'm actually good to go. So sometimes that happens, yeah? Sometimes it self-balances. Two twos are four and four, okay. All right. Flip over, step three, okay. So, you know, you can add to the equation you've got and I'll just repeat it, right? So we had MnO4 minus aqueous turning into Mn2 plus aqueous plus 4H2O, we said. And the other one was just the same. So that's, oh, that's the O2, yes. That's where we were, right? What does it say for step three? Balance the amount of hydrogen, that's just said to be balanced under acidic conditions, which most of them are, okay? Balance the amount of hydrogen atoms both sides in each half equation by adding H+. Plus. So we're adding acid, right? Maybe HCl or something in an experiment. Okay, so if we look here, no H plus is over here, but mm, 4H2O, that's 8, right? And oftentimes you get big numbers, right? So I need 8 H plus over here. We're adding H plus to balance the amount of hydrogen. Lucky for us, no hydrogen's in the second one. So we're good. Okay, that's not always true. You might have to balance hydrogens in the other equation, but uh, today we're good. All right, so we've balanced, just to recap, we've separated out into two half equations. We've made sure that we've got a consistent number of oxidized atoms, carbon and manganese. We've added water to balance oxygen. We've added H plus to balance hydrogen both sides. All right, now this is the big one. All right, so we're going to start talking about charges. We're going to start talking about moving electrons around, right? So what we're going to do, let's just get where we were. And again, you know, if you're just doing one kind of equation and adding bits to it, you can do that. But I'm just going to repeat what we got up there. That one. That one. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to make sure we have, and it's kind of a weird thing, make sure we have the same net charges on both sides, all right? And to make that happen, we're going to add electrons to make it happen, okay? So if I look here, I've got eight plus ones here and one minus one. So the net charge currently over here, if I want to kind of think about it, 
is currently a plus seven net charge, right? It's currently a plus seven. Over here, what's my net charge? Well, I got a plus two ion and a zero charge, right? So over here, it's a plus two net right now. Now remember, the charges on both sides have to be the same, right? And I'm gonna make them be the same net charge by adding electrons somewhere. Hmm, electrons are minus, of course. So I'm gonna bring this one down to two by adding five electrons. So five minuses, combined with seven pluses makes this now collectively a plus two. So it's the same plus two plus two. Okay, down here, we've got one minus two ion and two neutrals. So I need two electrons. It's minus two this side, minus two this side. All right, so we're nearly there, okay? We've got some electrons. Now, as we saw, all right, this is one half equation. Electrons are on this side. This is the other half equation. Electrons are on the other side. And that's what we need, okay? And that's what we need, okay? So you should always get electrons on opposite sides for the two half equations, because remember, it's implying transfer. Obviously, you can kind of see this already. Five does not balance two. So this is not a balanced process because that must be a consistent number of electrons. And I think you guessed it. How do you make it a consistent number? We're gonna multiply through by, to make it like a lowest common multiple. So nice and easy, flip over the page. Last thing, make sure the number of electrons is consistent, okay? Showing that a fixed number were transferred by multiplying through to make a common multiple, all right? So we had, let's just do it, right? So we had on the previous page, five electrons on one side and two on the other. So the multiplier would be up to 10, right? So I need 10 electrons. So I'm gonna multiply by two and by five, all right? So if I look back at my previous, maybe I can kind of do that. That maybe helps a little bit, right? So, <clears throat> can I bring it down? There it is, right? So the first one, I had five electrons and the second one I had two. So I'm gonna multiply this thing through by two to get a total of 10 electrons on the left, multiply through this one by five to get a total of 10 electrons on the right. So I'll do that, so you can just keep track here. So that's 10 electrons plus times two, 16 H plus. And we get big numbers when we balance these sometimes, okay? Plus, multiplying through by two, two MnO4 minus, turns into, Multiply by two, Mn2, Mn2 plus, plus, two fours are eight, eight H2O, they're good. Multiply through a second one by five, five C2O4, two minus, two fives are 10, 10 CO2, plus 10 electrons. And that's what we want, okay? So, we multiplied through to get that lowest common multiple. Lowest common multiple was 10. 10 electrons, two fives, five twos. All right. Now, we're nearly there. Okay, we're nearly there. All we're gonna do, once we've got our final two half equations, and you know these are the final two because you've got a consistent number of electrons, just copy them back out and then just add them together. Okay, so just like we did before, we added those two half equations. So I'm just copying down, oh, move up. So I'm copying down what I have here, then I'll just add, okay. It's my oxidation half equation. Sorry, reduction half equation. And, okay, so all I'm gonna do, trusty ruler. <laughs> Camera should always keep a ruler about that person. Okay, so always have a ruler and a periodic table. <laughs> okay. Now, all I'm gonna do, just add the two half equations. So I've got 10 electrons plus 16 H plus plus two MnO4 minus, plus five oxalate, turns into two 
to MN2 plus plus 8H2O plus 10 CO2 plus 10 electrons. Now, obviously the electrons have to cancel. If they don't cancel, you didn't do it right, right? Because that implies transfer of a fixed number, right? And oftentimes you can cancel other things. Do other things cancel? Unfortunately, in this case, no. That's a 10, right? So the answer is 16H plus 2MnO4 minus 5C2O42 minus 2MnO2 plus 8 water, 10 CO2. That is quite a mouthful, but oftentimes redox reactions are kind of complex like that. So don't be surprised if you get a complex answer like that. That is correct. All right. Now, back in the day, <laughs> before the invention of kind of like really good uh, lithium batteries in smartphones, right? We used to have NICAD battery, all right? So we could actually, you know, in class, take out our kind of brick-sized <laughs> cell phones back in the day, look at the battery compartment, it would say, you know, NICAD battery, all right? A NICAD battery is just, you know, all batteries, to be honest, are redox processes. You have one half equation, and we'll do this in the next part of the packet in more detail. You have one oxidation and one reduction half equation, and the electrons transfer transfer through a wire, which powers a device, okay? So it's kind of a spontaneous pair of reactions which transfer electrons through your iPod and makes the iPod work, right? Okay. So all batteries are redox processes or work on redox processes, so you see a transfer of electrons through a wire. Okay. Now, here is the unbalanced redox for our NICAD battery. Okay, what I want you to do, and um, you know, consider this a little test here. Okay, work it out. So follow the rules. Some of the rules will be, um, you know, not applicable, but you follow them anyway, right? So you, you know, you'll uh, do certain things and it won't change anything, but that's okay. Follow the rules and eventually you'll get to the answer. Okay, so pause there, give it a shot. All right. So welcome back, if you're coming back. So what we're gonna do, obviously, is sign oxidation states here, right? So first things first, cadmium's an ion, sorry, cadmium's just an element, zero. Minus two times two, that's a plus four. Mm, now, interesting, hydroxide ions together make a minus one, right? So two hydroxides are minus two, so that must be a plus two. Just like, you know, just like balancing ions in an ionic formula, same kind of deal here. Okay, so oxidation is loss, all right? Which one of these is oxidation? Oxidation is loss. Which one, if you like, oxidation is loss of electrons, went more positive, all right? So this guy here went from a zero to a two, it went more positive. So it lost minuses. So that's the oxidation step, okay? Reduction, kind of makes sense, right? Reduction. A nice way to think about it is reduction in oxidation state. Reduction. Okay. So if I do my two half equations, then we know we're good because we've got one cadmium and one nickel. So real quick, our two half equations are cadmium solid turns into cadmium hydroxide solid and NiO2 turns into NiOH2, solid. Okay, so that's our oxidation half equation. We can write it there if you want, and that's our reduction half equation. Fair enough. Now we're gonna go through the steps, yeah? We've already done the first step. We've already identified the two half equations and got the right number of oxidized and reduced atoms. So the action happens with cadmium and nickel. Okay, so if you remember rule number one, rule number one was balance oxygen out, right? by adding water. So here, I've got two oxygens, so I need two H2O. And you can see what I mean by, you know, if you write down the half equations one time, you don't have to keep repeating it. Yeah, you can kind of just fill in stuff as you go. All right, so that gets my two oxygens, two oxygens here, two oxygens, two oxygens. So down here, we're okay. Down here, we're okay. All right, now, Next, balance hydrogen by adding H plus, right? So if we look here, two H pluses, hmm, or just two H's, and here four H's. So I'm gonna to have to put plus two H plus here. Fair enough. Here, no H pluses, well, rephrase that, two H's here, so I need 
two H pluses over here. This is looking promising for some canceling later because we're getting some consistent numbers, right? Okay. So now we've added our O in the form of water. We've added our H in the form of H plus. We're balancing under acidic conditions, we call it. Okay. Now it's that net charge thing. What's the net charge? Well, the net charge, neutral plus one, two of them. So that's a, a plus two net charge here, and it's a zero over here, both neutral. So electrons, remember, are the only things we can add. I'm gonna add them here, two electrons. So that's now a zero. Okay, I can only add electrons and it can only go down, right? So I can reduce pluses to kind of more negative. Here, this side is also a plus two. That side is a zero, same kind of deal, right? Two electrons, makes nice, two on the, opposite sides there. All right, so that's now zero. And that's, you know, it's a simpler, simpler version, okay? Do we have a consistent number of electrons? We did that, you know, lowest multiple thing earlier to get this to be a consistent number. We multiplied by two and five respectively to get multiple of 10. Here it's two and two, so we're actually good. We don't have to do that last step. We can just jump straight in and add them. Okay, jump straight in and add them. CD, solid, plus, 2H2O liquid reactants plus two electrons plus NiO2 solid plus 2H plus aqueous turns into two electrons plus CD OH2 around space <laughs> plus NiOH2 solid. All right, now, obviously electrons have to cancel, that's a given. Does anything else cancel? What have we got? Oh, I've got 2H plus, so that's handy, okay. And there we go. So actually the answer is pretty neat. It's quite neat and compact for a redox. Just add a little bit of water. Obviously the standard rules of balancing a base, so one cadmium, one cadmium, one nickel, one nickel, you know, two and two is four oxygens, two and two is four oxygens, four hydrogens, four hydrogens. So, you know, the balancing the atoms also applies, so you can double check at the end. But, you know, again, key thing, as long as you've transferred a consistent number of electrons and it's balanced in a standard way, it's good. Okay, so, that's balancing redox equations, very important skill. Okay, practice a few of those. Now in the back of the book, you can read about balancing under alkali conditions if you wish, instead of, you know, adding H plus, you'd add OH minus to get rid of H pluses. Okay, so you can balance under redox or acidic, but most are acidic. You can, you can look at redox with basic if you want, but again, acidic is usually the one. All right, now, what we're gonna do we're going to talk in a lot more detail about how batteries work. And if we did our lab, and I kind of really like this lab in chemistry, wanted to actually make our own batteries. Okay, unfortunately, we can't do this this semester. All right. But um, in this next part of the packet, which I'll do in a separate video in a moment, okay, we're going to talk about how batteries actually work. And how batteries actually work, always think about those two half equations as a tug of war for electrons. Okay, so you have usually two metals in a battery, right? So for example, zinc copper battery is the classic um, Duracell, okay? So we have copper and zinc, those are the two metals. Now one of those metals is more reactive and it's actually gonna be zinc, right? So this is called the reactivity series and copper is lower down. So metals that are more reactive actually turn into ions. So the more reactive metal will lose electrons, the less the reactive will gain and we see a transfer of electrons. And that's what happens in a wire when you plug in a battery, okay? So we'll talk about that in more detail in the next packet. But very simply, batteries work on a difference in oxidizing power, reducing power for the pairs of metals involved. Okay, stop there, talk about that when we get back.